Welcome back to the book of Psalms and our study is today in chapter 146. We are getting close to the end of this book. It's been a wonderful journey and today we're going to be looking at what is uh, titled Praise and Trust Him. So this is a good positive psalm and our introduction that I'd like to share with you is we do not know who wrote this psalm. There is nothing written in a pretext before verse 1. And so we have a psalm with an author that we do not know anything about. However, we do know some things. Uh, it fits in chronologically in your Bible and mine at Ezra chapter 6, verse 22. The dates are accurate. Uh, April it would be our April 14th through the 21st, and the year was 526 B.C. So what is the backstory here? All right, the temple has just been completed. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, almost 100 years prior to this, um, came, into, uh, came to Jerusalem and destroyed it, and burned it to the ground. And so... Uh, the temple now uh, through the, the Persian king Cyrus and then Darius also, um, they gave permission for the Jews to go back and rebuild. And so the Lord used these two Persian kings, Cyrus and Darius, to not only allow the Jews to return, but they financed their trip and the building supplies. Also, anything that was in the Persian vault that belonged in the temple they took, they, they took back to Jerusalem with them also. So the Persians kept nothing. God used these uh, kings and this empire in a mighty way to uplift his people and, get, and hopefully get them back on the right path. This psalm fits in uh, on the eight-day celebration of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so our outline is simple, uh, praise God and trust God. And this is not a long psalm. And uh, let's get into this and praise the Lord and trust the Lord. So here we go. Praise you, the Lord. Um, and in the Hebrew, this would read shine. Let, let God praises shine. Let God shine in our lives. Let the testimonies of the Lord shine. Uh, speak of God and speak of our Lord in, in great ways because we have a great God. And so this is just an, an uplifting thing uh, for God's people that we have an opportunity to, uh, part of our praise is to focus the spotlight on the Lord. And then we come across the, the phrase, praise the Lord, and that's praise you, the Lord, that's hallelujah. Um, and that's where we get that just one word, and that's what it means. Oh, my soul. All right, the, once again, though, back to the beginning, the word Lord is Jehovah there, as it is uh, the second time it's used. And that means, Jehovah means the existing one, always has been, who is, and who always will be. All right, we're off to a good start. While I live... I will praise the Lord, and I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. And so once again, part of our praising is not just to focus and put the spotlight on the Lord, but also to your, use our voices and sing. So the first one would be more in our speaking and uplifting the name of the Lord. The second one is singing praises, singing unto the Lord. And it doesn't matter how well you sing or don't sing, sing praises to the Lord. It will, it will change your heart. All right, then we spend most of this psalm in, tr in trusting the Lord. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no hope. All right, who were the princes? Okay, these, these in the kingdom were the best of men. They, they were generous. They would give large amounts of money to, to worthy causes, not as payoffs, 
but just as donations to help people, to help groups. But here is what is being said right here about them. Don't put your trust in them. Don't bank of them as always going to bail you out. If, if for instance, if it was a church and you ran the church debt up, that you would ba always bank on the princes, the, the men, women that had money, in this case men, to bail you out. And that's not what the reason was that they were there for. And so we understand, put our trust in the Lord, because the Lord never goes anywhere. He's always there. So trust the Lord and trust God to touch people's hearts to meet needs in your church or in your life. And so as I, I jotted here in red, I said they, couldn't, they, they can't give happiness. Um, they really can't give eternal help. And they really don't give hope because there's really no hope in them. Help here is salvation or deliverance. It can't save anyone. Three, or verse four rather, his breath goes forth, he returns to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. This is not talking about God. It's talking about man and, and men and mankind as a whole. Man came from the earth and we will go back to the earth. We are created out of dust and we will go back to dust and be part of the, the earth. If we know Jesus Christ is our savior, our, our soul, our spirit goes to be with him. If we do not, our soul or spirit goes to hell. Verse five, happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. God here now is Elohim, and it's not the word Lord then, would be Jehovah. But now all of a sudden, it's not the God of Israel. It's, uh, it's, it's Israel's other name, the God of Jacob. And here is a reminder that before Israel was a, a nation, God was, has always been with his people, and God always before that time was help and hope. So don't never forget that God is eternal. And if he is a God of hope today, he was that in eternity past as he will be in eternity future. Six, which made man and earth, the earth and sea and all that therein is, which keeps truth forevermore. Keep means to guard it and he keeps it and uh, it's, it's entrusted with him. There's no change. Which executes judgment for the oppressed which gives food to the hungry, the Lord loosens or looses the prisoners. So here we have some more Hebrew that gives us some really good insight to what God does and how God is at work. And here we come across the word executes. It means he accomplishes justice for the oppressed, for those that have been violated, for those that have been pressed upon, those that have been put down. And the Lord comes along and his judgments are just and he executes, he accomplishes, he brings about his justice for those that are oppressed or put down. He lifts them up, which gives food to the hungry. In some ways, people that are hungry are this. And those that are seem to be prisoners, prisoners, by themselves, they're, they're just, they've talked themselves into there's no way out. They don't think there's help on the way that anybody can help them, but God can. Just need to seek him. God will loose them. Verse 8, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous or the lawful. Now, all of a sudden, we get, we start seeing God has a healing hand too. But but there is never a whole psalm about God healing, although God heals people everywhere throughout the Bible, but that's not all who God is. But we do understand, though, today, and we speak that God can heal, heal, and God does heal. And the Lord raises them up that are bowed down, that are humble, and the Lord loves the lawful or the righteous. The Lord preserves the strangers, Preserve means guards them again, and the sojourner or the traveler. He relieves the fatherless and widow, 
but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever, even your God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise you the Lord. So the conclusion is all of a sudden he's talking about individuals or a certain uh, body of people, those that are blind or those that are oppressed. Now he talks and just opens it up to the entire nation of Israel. And the psalmist says this, Lord, you shall reign forever. You are our God, basically. And you'll do it from all of our generations. And we say hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, for that. Father, you are a wonderful God, and we thank you for your promises. Things that you have said you always will do, you always give, you are always there, you are our help. And we thank you for that. And so we praise you and we trust you. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, amen. Please uh, check uh, my YouTube channel out. You're on it right now. And uh, just look around on it. Go to the playlist and you'll see the different books of the Bible studies we've done, other biblical things, archaeological finds, uh, Bible trivia, and then we have some Americana sections, some that are just on the light side that are a lot of fun. But it's all about America. So, uh, we'll continue on, and I'll see you next time for Psalm 147.